to Prabha on how that's affected people. And certainly reducing the waiting time has been helpful. So the waiting time used to be seven weeks. One week where you couldn't claim and then six weeks whilst you waited for the benefit. Now it's reduced to five weeks. But the wait for the initial payment still is leaving people unable to keep up with the bills. Um, we're seeing rent increase, we're seeing people not being able to pay for their fuel and the food, of course, that's been the focus of this morning. Um, people we help with debt who claim new benefit of an average of £2 left each month after essential costs, compared to £12 a month for people on legacy benefits. Seven out of ten people, <coughs> we see um, you, taking universal credit, get advances in universal credit, that has to be paid back. So that actually leaves people on living on less than the government determines they need to live on for a much prolonged period. And what we're seeing is the cumulative impact of that has on local, the spending of local authorities in provision of homelessness, the stress and, and, and problems that poverty lead in terms of health and well-being. So the expenditure on the health service is increasing, the pressure on the health service is increasing. And I think that cumulative impact needs to be looked at. It's not just universal credit, it's not just fuel poverty. It's the, it's the range of changes that have been implemented since, since 2013, which has had a horrendous impact. So we've seen a reduction in sickness benefits. We've seen it being much more difficult for people to claim disability benefits. We've seen disabled people and physically disabled have their car taken away. We want to encourage people back to work. How do we do that when they're taking the vehicle away from them, meaning they can't get to work? We're seeing very few people on universal credit, or indeed on any benefit now, have their full rent met by benefits. So that minimum amount the government says they need to live on is already reduced because they've got to make a top up of their rent. And as somebody said, the properties around here can be a little bit of a concern. We're seeing the spare room subs subsidy reducing the, the amount of, of council tax rent. And that means that communities are starting to disperse. Well, you know, we've, we've got clients who come into us who brought their children up in certain communities, who are involved in the community, who are now having to leave because they can't afford to continue to live in the property they've had since the children were young. Mm -hmm. That's a, a big impact. Um, and we're seeing the two child rule. Do people know that you can only claim benefits for two children. What happens to those people who've, who've had children and uh, bereaved partners? You know, they've had a bereavement, or the partner's left. It's, it's blaming people. It makes people feel responsible for having children and responsible for having low incomes. So, Citizens Advice Research, we, we, we spoke to 190,000 clients. Uh, we see a lot of clients. Not just in... <laughs> not in more than the last... You've been bloody busy. We are bloody busy. We are bloody busy. Um, Debt problems are becoming the most common <coughs> issue amongst people um, on universal credit, much more so than those on legacy benefits. Legacy benefits, I think most people know what the old, old type of benefits are, if, if not, I can obviously explain that. 24% of people we help with UC were also seeking <coughs> advice on debt. 47% have no money for their essential living costs after paying creditors. Uh, and 82% have priority debts. Again, that's the impact on our local councils. Mm -hmm. Council tax arrears, rent arrears, mm -hmm. homelessness provision. Um, people on benefits are, are really struggling to keep a roof over their head. They feel responsible for the situation they're in. And it's up to all of us. And I completely agree with Andy, and, and I know we've had this little conversation before, that, that we as a community need to come together to help, mm. to look after each other, and that is without doubt probably the strongest and most proactive thing we can do, but we cannot let legislators get away with this. Yeah. We've got to constantly, constantly keep shouting from the rooftops, 
about the impact of these changes. I love the service I work for because we do that. We advise people and we also look at that evidence. What we want now is an end, a, a true end to austerity measures. Um, we were told that a couple of months ago and now we're told that local authorities are going to get three, three billion pounds less. Um, our local authority have been fantastic. They've kept council tax support for people. They're aware of the, of the struggles of our local community, but they can only do so much. So now is the time for us all to come together and work in true partnership gather that fantastic evidence you were talking about, you know, why aren't we looking at all the food provision in the district and saying, this isn't just Morecambe Bay Food Bank, this is a huge problem around the district. And we all need to be gathering together that evidence, working together, and start to make some changes to our local community permanently. Thank you.